Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Investor Intel. I'm Peter Clausey. Very curious about today's topic. Viscount Mining Corp is a company I have followed since it went public in 2015. I have lost the thread of the story. So today we're talking with Jim McKenzie, the CEO and founder, so I can learn the story again. Jim, welcome. Peter, a pleasure to be here. Now, I, you and I seem to think we met about three years ago in Vancouver, but we're not sure. Correct. So funny in the mining industry how we go around and around and know all the same people. Absolutely. So Viscount Mining um, put out drill results by coincidence today, and they were spectacular. Do you want to walk us through them? Well, thank you, Peter. Uh, this is on our project in Colorado at Silver Cliff, focusing on one of the th uh, four, actually, historical deposits on the property. It's called the Kate. Uh, we drilled uh, back there in 20 Sorry, K-A-T-E? K yeah. Okay. We drilled at the Kate deposit in 2016 and 2017 and got some incredible numbers. And uh, obviously at that time we were in a terrible bear market and there really wasn't much attention paid to it by the market. But what was significant about that drill program is uh, just a little history first on 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 uh, this area. So it's Colorado, uh, Col Colorado, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back in the um, back in the 1970s and 1980s, there was extensive drilling on the property and two main deposits, the Kate and the Passiflora. Coke drilled the uh, Passiflora uh, back in the uh, early 80s and proved out 64 million ounces of silver. But the price of silver was not uh, conducive to putting it into production. So the property got mothballed. The Kate was drilled by Teneco Minerals, which was a subsidiary of Tennessee Oil and Gas. And they proved out 50 million ounces of silver and were in the process of putting it into production, building a $35 million mill. And this was with silver at $5 an ounce and open pit. What happened is Teneco Minerals was a subsidiary of Tennessee Oil and Gas, an NYSE listed company. They got bought out by a European conglomerate that was after the oil and gas assets and had no interest at all in the resource sector. So it, it just so fell to the side. The property got shuffled to the side. And those, sorry Jim, those resource estimates predate 43101, right? Yes, they do, Peter. Yes, yes, they do. So these are all non-compliant 43101 resources that I'm referring to today. So getting back to our story of 2016-2017, uh, we, we drilled uh, over the year and uh, had incredible high-grade silver starting at surface, uh, going down to about 50, 60 meters. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the market just, uh, you know, the market just had no interest in it. Uh, everybody uh, back at that time, as you'll know, they were all smoking marijuana. It was all about the cannabis industry. In, in 2017, so, we put out drill results on a gold project that should have tripled the price, and instead it went down. Incredible. Uh, a lot of short-sightedness on, uh, on investors. So what was interesting, Peter, about the program as I mentioned, not only did we get incredible results, but we twinned a number of holes that Teneco drilled back in the late 80s to get to their resource. And in the 80s, they did RC or reverse circulation drilling. And when we drilled in 16, 17, we did core. And every hole we twinned was 100 to 300 percent higher grade than what they had drilled in the 1980s. So again, a lot of excitement amongst our geos. We came out with a 43-101 in Ferdinand indicated of 12.7 million ounces of silver in 2018 and really didn't do anything with the property as we awaited for the, uh, for the market to wake up in the resource sector. In October of this year, we started phase one of a three-phase drill program on the property and we focused at the Kate. So, sorry to interrupt. I'm always curious, what was the point of the drill program? 
Was it to get to know the property better or did it have a specific purpose? The program we just did, well, it was to, what, what our plan is, Peter, is we want to uh, have a revised 43101 come out as we work towards and hopefully increase the historical resource that Tenneco had proved out. So the purpose of this first 10 holes that we drilled, we drilled nine at the Cate and we drilled one at the Passiflora, which uh, was our first hole we had uh, drilled up there. So going to the Cate deposit, the opportunity here was to obviously continue to drill, find high grade silver, so we can increase the 43101. But we also wanted to step out and see if the resource expanded from the historical resource that Tenneco had proven out. And we determined that with the holes that we drilled uh, last fall in 2020. And we believe that the resource extends in three directions uh, from the original Kate deposit. So our plan is to drill in February to go back in and start our next uh, program. And we will run three programs uh, right now uh, at the uh, Kate, as I mentioned, with the hope of having a revised uh, 43101 in 2021 uh, so we can bring up our current resource to above the historical resource that Tenneco proved up. Okay. The Passive Flora. Yeah, who, names, who wrote, names these projects? We've all sorry? had pro we've all had projects <laughs> over these years with weird names. Like, why would not one be named Kate and the one beside it named Passy Flora? Well, I think that was probably the guy's wife and his dog. Um, maybe those were the names. I, you know, it's amazing what people name claims. So, the one hole we drilled at the Passy Flora, as I mentioned, we we have not received that assay back, but. What got the geos excited is it was about 156 meters of sulfides and silicification, which is easy for me to say, uh, throughout the hole. So as uh, you're probably aware, the assay labs are fully booked and uh, assays are taking a little longer to come back than uh, what they have in the past. So. Based on where we drilled at the Kate, we now have our plan moving forward for the next phase of drilling, which will begin in February. And we will also go up to the Passiflora and continue to drill there. When this phase of the program is completed, the geos will go over all the data and plan out the next holes. And the third phase of the program should start sometime mid-summer of 2021. Do you have any updated uh, long sections or uh, elevations? Nothing that I have in front of me right now. Okay. I, I always like those. It helps me to understand the data better when I can see the picture. Right. We are just in the process because we just basically got the results back of getting the cross sections, et cetera, all put together, which will be available on our website when we receive them. Okay, so let's talk about the company itself. Uh, 83 million shares outstanding, and you've never done a consolidation. That's correct. And the company's been around about a decade. It's been around, uh, it was, uh, I started it in 2010. We went public in 2013. That's pretty good. That's very good treasury management that uh, they're only 83 million out. So, Well, we're very cognizant of what we spend our money on because the money we spend is shareholders' money. And we need to put it into uh, the ground to advance our properties. Um, I'm very, very cognizant of that. And, you know, my main job as CEO is to increase shareholder value. And the best way to do that is to continue to drill and put out results uh, like we did off of the last nine holes. Yeah, you got no respect for the last drill round or the last set of holes you put out. And they were tremendous. Um Today, the market's responding extremely well to today's results. And looking at your chart over the past year, you've more or less tracked the rise in silver than with a little dump in December when silver had its run back down. So it's, it looks like nice leverage to the silver price. I think we've, uh, I think we've really held up well. 
Um, I certainly uh, think we're coming out of a bear market uh, here in the in the uh, resource sector. I obviously am extremely bullish on gold and silver. Actually, more bullish on silver than gold, just for the uh, what silver is used for. But um, yes, we we've held up very well over the past year, and that says a lot about our shareholders. We have a a group that's been with us since day one. They're very high net worth. They're extremely long and very loyal. Sixty uh, percent of the stock is owned by officers, directors, insiders, family, and friends. Um, every share that uh, that I own, I've uh, purchased in private placements or in the market. Have not sold any stock. This is, uh, as I've said to a number of our shareholders a few times, this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. We really have something here on both our properties in Nevada and the Silver Cliff Project in Colorado. And these are opportunities that maybe come across your desk every second lifetime. And to have Cherry Creek in Nevada and Silver Cliff under the Viscount umbrella is extremely fortunate for us because either one of these projects are company builders on their own. You just so, optioned off Cherry Creek, right? Yes, we did. Um, Centera Gold, uh, which is a major gold producer, uh, we announced an uh, earning agreement with them or an option agreement uh, in January of 2021. They have an opportunity to earn 70% uh, of the property by spending $8 million over four years. Work will be starting imminently on the property. And we're excited to be working with a, a company of the standard of Santerra. Um, we both started doing due diligence, and uh, in, in August, I say we started dating. We're going steady now. Um, and uh, they were very impressed with uh, what they saw in our data room on Cherry Creek. This is an incredibly exciting property, Peter. This is a, this is a district that was brought to me by uh, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Howard Latte, who was... Uh, uh, very close to me, a well-respected geo who unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. But what was exciting about Cherry Creek is this is a district in the northeastern part of Nevada located in what's called the Pequot Trend, not as well known as the Carland, but I'll get to that in a moment. But Cherry Creek had 20 previously producing mines on it, produced from the mid-1800s to 1919, 1920, and then in the 1940s, the U.S. government went in and mined tungsten during the Second World War for the manufacture of munitions. And really nothing happened uh, after that point. The main reason there were five families that controlled the district and they didn't like each other. And there were a number of significant companies that tried to put it together but were unsuccessful. I don't know what our secret was. Um, it took me a year. I met with every family, gave them my vision and where I hope to see this go. And after a year, uh, we ended up with 2,600 acres of all patented land with 20 previously producing mines on it. So fast forward, uh, did a lot of uh, work on the ground, uh, some incredible sampling. Our, our highest uh, silver sample was 8,700 grams a ton. Our highest gold sample was 76. We expanded the uh, we expanded the property to about 8,000 hectares. That 76 is grams per ton, not ounces per ton. That that's grams okay. on the gold. Yes, yes. So we expanded we expanded the property, and what was really interesting, Peter, is uh, back in 2017, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Mike Russell, who used to be the chief geo of Newmont and was actually in that position when they purchased Long Canyon in 2010 for just over $2 billion US. Long Canyon is located in the Pequot Trend that I alluded to earlier, about 90 miles north of our property. And Dr. Russell uh, put his top student at the time, he was the uh, Associate Professor of Geology 
at the University of Nevada in Reno. And his student did his three-year master thesis on Cherry Creek. And uh, what was interesting, it was about 120 pages, extremely technical, but certainly indicated the same stratigraphy and lithology as they're finding at Long Canyon, which, by the way, when we went public in 2013, I'm digressing a bit, but as you know, you have to have a 43101 to qualify it as a property of merit. We hired Snowden, uh, you know, one of the larger mining consultant companies in the world to do the 43101. And they also identified the same stratigraphy and lithology as Long Canyon. So when we received this 100 plus page thesis, which was extremely technical, and I asked for a dumbed down version for me because I am not a geo. And basically they said, look, you've got the, the heart and the body of the Pequot trend and Long Canyon, Newmont's property has the arms and the legs. We also have Kinross, which has Bald Mountain in production as well in the Pequot trend. So as I mentioned, this area is not as well known as the Carlin trend, but an interesting point. Our right, sorry, and, and that's because yeah. silver has always been gold's ugly younger sister. Gold, well, gold, yes. gets, gold gets the headlines. That's right. But there was significant gold mined on this property as well. And um, our geos, along with our uh, uh, technical advisors, believe there's a significant uh, gold deposit, possibly two, sitting on the property. But what's interesting about the Pequot trend is Mark Abrams, who's our VP of Exploration, Mark was actually recognized by the Geological Society of Nevada in 2016 for the development of the Pequot trend. So we have an incredible team of geos that are working with us and Centera's team on that project. We have Dr. Jamie Robinson, who's made numerous discoveries in Nevada, and Harold Hogberg, who is our QP. Harold actually was the gentleman that wrote the 43101 when he worked for Snowden, and he liked the property so much that he has come to work with us. So he actually is running our program in Silvercliff right now uh, as our Nevada geos are getting ready to start work with Santerra on the property at Cherry Creek in Nevada. So Viscount Mining, how's the treasury? We have about three and a half million dollars uh, currently. Uh, so we're well financed. Uh, that money going towards advancing Silvercliff and uh, as we talked about earlier, uh, we have Santerra spending their money at Cherry Creek, so we don't have to worry about allocating any of the money we have in the Treasury to that property at this point. Any thoughts of doing a financing around here, or are we in wait-and-see mode? No, we will not be doing uh, any financings uh, right now. We are uh, well cashed up to advance the Silvercliff property in Colorado. And also, I feel that we're extremely undervalued right now. As I mentioned earlier, you know, we're sitting on two company builders underneath the Viscount umbrella. Um, we have a uh, non-compliant resource of uh, over 100 million ounces of silver sitting on the property. It is certainly not factoring into the price of our stock. I think you mentioned earlier it would be open pitable too, most likely. The Kate deposit is open pit. Uh, when Tenneco was going to put it into production and with their $35 million mill they were going to build, it's open pit. This starts at surface, right at the surface, and goes to uh, goes to about 60 meters, 50 to 60 meters. Um, my math shows you're about a $35 million market cap, which, given everything you've said today, seems a little light. Extremely light. I like the project. I thank you for bringing me up to speed on it again. I think silver's going to have a magnificent year, um, together, of course, with uranium, cobalt, and gold. Um, I'm not sure how much I like lithium from here on in, but silver is certainly one of my top five. Well, I couldn't agree with you more, and the applications for silver are growing every day, and, um, you know, we're not seeing 
large silver deposits being discovered in mining friendly jurisdictions. Uh, silver that is being found in other areas of the world is deep. Um, you know, the cost uh, for an open pit, as we know, is, is a lot less than having to build an underground mine. So um, I see silver uh, having a really nice year. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the technical person that picks the price, but I certainly see it considerably higher from where we are today. I would agree. So nice catching up with you again, Jim. Take care of your stones. Keep them rolling. Viscount Mining trading is VML. Peter Clausey signing off from Investor Intel. Have a safe day.